Hello, wonderful. This is Sarah, and I know that I know that I know that I know you have a focus on self-love or trying to get to self-love or hoping to accomplish self-love. And we all know that uh, we have to love ourselves first, but how to love ourselves is a little more confusing. So we are here with expert Amelia Fortes, who is writing a book and working within the seven pillars of self-love. Hello, Amelia. How are you? Hi, Sarah. Thank you so, so much for having me here. I'm super excited to be with you today. <laughs> awesome. I'm just that our podcast listeners can't see like your earrings because they're so on point. Thank so you. gorgeous. <laughs> I love Maybe I'll get to see a video version some, somewhere. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I love the, the big earrings with the dark hair look. It just thank like, you. Me too. It's it's, it's, it's right? the vibe. It's totally the vibe. <laughs> yeah, I like fun. And my assistant actually sent me um big earrings for Christmas. So I was like, oh, oh thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, <fun. laughs> so fun. So what why don't you explain what self-love means to you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you're asking that. It's really great to like level set what it is, you right. know. And Honestly, for me, it's, um, I actually call it courageous self-love, which is the name of my podcast too, because, you know, especially the last few years, a lot of people are like self-love, I love myself, you know, I'm going to go to the spa, I'm going to get my nails done. Why? Because I love myself. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they're like, of course I love myself. But in the day to day, are you really feeling at peace? Are you really feeling fulfilled and successful and happy? And that's like the self-love where you really feel it in your bones and in your experience that you are worthy simply because you exist. Mm -hmm. And the reason I call it courageous self-love is because to get to that point, that really powerful place inside of you, it's going to take courage and it's going to take looking at maybe some of the darker parts of you or some of the darker parts of your life experience. And, you know, that kind of real, true, courageous self-love is, you know, it's more than just going to the spa and getting your nails done for sure, which I'm sure, you know, is definitely true. <laughs> well, yeah. So I had a client and she talked about the difference between self-maintenance and self-care. And I thought it was so well worded. So even as I was listening to you talk, I was like, okay, there's three categories, self-maintenance, self-care, self-love, right? And those really are three different things. They really are. And I, I love, I really love that. And adding like the third dimension, because yeah, self-maintenance is like, yep, got to brush my teeth, floss my teeth, mm -hmm. uh, go to take a shower, all of these things and just maintain your health. And then self-care is kind of like that extra thing that you maybe do. Like maybe you, when you're getting a pedicure, you go all out a little bit and go, let's do the spa pedicure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get the mm -hmm. massage. And, but self-love is like, it's like a deep inner soul knowing, like in your bones, in your cells, in your mm -hmm. gut, that you are worthy and you, you deserve everything you want simply because you exist. There's no like need to, to do, or Brene Brown calls it worthiness hustle. You're already worthy. And that that's, that's, ooh, that's deep. <laughs> well, and you talked about looking into the, some of the dark places and there's, I'm sure you're familiar with the term like toxic positivity, right. Yeah. Or something where it's like, Oh, I just, you know, good vibes only. And it's like, I, I wish that I wish I could give people that advice, right? I wish it was like good vibes only. If anything feels dark or scary or uncomfortable, just ignore all those things and just focus on what makes you feel good. Like, I wish that was the advice because that would be a lot more fun to give out candy rather than telling people <laughs> to eat their vegetables. Right. But then again, if you, even with that example alone, if you're only giving out candy, it's going to rot your teeth, like too much sugar. Mm -hmm is too much, you know, and I'm so glad you brought up toxic positivity because I think a lot of times like the self-love, the pop culture self-love that's out there is kind of conflated with that toxic positivity where it's like, let's say, uh, you know, you go through a breakup and someone really breaks your heart and you're just kind of like, well, whatever, I love myself. You're kind of dismissing and, and bypassing the truth of that, that there is, that's there. And that's the hurt and the pain. And that's what toxic positivity does. And of course we want good vibes. Of course we want positivity. Of course we want sunshine and rainbows, but you know, 
if we only had that, we would be dry and desolate, you know? So we need the rain, we need the storms. And I think it's irresponsible for people to, um, to give out that advice of like only positivity and only good vibes. It's just not realistic. And not only that, on the flip side, people go down this shame spiral, sometimes unconsciously, because then they're like, okay, I feel like crap. And now I feel like crap because I feel like crap or like, I actually don't feel like I love myself right now, but I'm supposed to have self-love. So now I'm going to feel even worse that I don't have self-love, you know, and it's, yeah. and I'm the, as, as a self-love expert, so to say, I'm the first to say, I have so many moments where I don't love myself and that's what makes it real. That's what makes it authentic. I'm not going to go around and say, I love myself 24, seven, 365. That would be a lie. And anyone who does, I don't know, I would, I would run the other way to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of my listeners have experience with narcissistic personalities. So even as you were talking about the, well, whatever they're gone, I love myself and bypassing anything hard. I mean, that's so often what toxic people do or narcissists do. It's like, I can only see the amazing things about myself. Anything that I may need to work on or grow in that I'm going to project it onto someone else because, yeah. um, I, I'm scared of it. Right. So they yeah. can only see, they, they tell themselves like good things only, not good vibes only necessarily, but like right. good things only. <laughs> it's, and it's scary. You know, it's scary to only see that side. It's unrealistic. It's inauthentic. And I think it's irresponsible to, mm -hmm. to only see that because life is a full, is a full circle. It's a full experience, you know, and honestly, you can't really actually know what joy is without pain and sorrow. And you can't actually know what, what, um, pleasure and relaxation feels like without knowing what tension and stress feels like. So you kind of have to have that contrast it, and it's, it's important. And yeah, that definitely, we don't want to bypass bypass that with any kind of toxic positivity or good vibes only. <laughs> Have you seen The Good Life with Kristen Bell? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, Did you it, watch it at the end? Called the, uh, the Good Place. The Good Place. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. The Good Place. Yeah. Well, at the end, not to be super spoiler, but at the end, there was a situation where people um, were in like so-called heaven or the good place or, or yeah. whatever it is. And they were so bored. And like these people who had had amazing minds and great minds, it was like, I can have everything I want all the time. I never have any problems. I never have this. I never have any conflict. And they, they talked about like these great minds, like degenerating yes. because they didn't have anything to think about other than what kind of milkshake they wanted. Um, right. it's and... like everything I want, I just get. And actually I'm so glad you, that's actually one of my favorite, favorite shows. So I'm so happy uh -huh. you brought it up and anyone who hasn't seen it, it's a beautiful, fun, comedic show, but like with a really deep message. Yes. Um, and actually Abraham Hicks, who's a spiritual teacher, one of my spiritual teachers um, set, channeled this message and was basically like, it would be boring if you could just snap your fingers and get whatever you want. And like what you're talking about in the show, that's what they were bored by because they're just like, I just get whatever I want all the time and I'm happy all the time. So it's like, every day is the same. And even if it's mm -hmm. like a little different, like you said, different milkshake today versus tomorrow, it's just like, you know, and it's the dark stuff, like, adds the color and dimension to life. And I think it's a big reason we're here. Like it's a big reason we're here to experience the full spectrum of emotion. Yeah. Today. yeah. And to grow up. Yeah. Right. But I mean, you know, the human, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you, or how do people take steps into self-love if they feel like, ah, okay, courageous self-love. Okay. Getting my nails done. I know what to do. Entering yeah. into courageous self-love feels terrifying. Uh, what steps should they take? Yeah, that's a really, really great question. And um, it's um, the foundation of all the work that I do and that I teach. You know, I work one on one with clients, I work in groups, and then I also just teach like on my platform. Is all the foundation is what I call the seven pillars of self love because, you know, that question comes up a lot where it's like, okay, so where do I start? And so you start with the seven pillars. And really, what the seven pillars are is um, it's three trees, the fruits. So basically 
the things that I've seen most people want to improve that have a foundation of self-love. And so the first thing is dating and relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of your show is about relationships and things like that. So people want to know, how do I have more fulfilling romance and relationships in my life without the narcissist, the toxicity and all of that? So that's like one of the pillars because it's something that's so important to a lot of people and human beings were very relational. So dating and relationships, then you have career and business, right? Vocation, life purpose, all of that stuff. People want something meaningful. They want to be a part of something bigger. They want to know that their life has meaning and that their career and or business is doing something in the world, right? So that's mm -hmm. one of the other pillars. Um, and then the other one is money and abundance, right? I know a lot of people like to say money isn't the most important thing, but the truth is in our life, like we need money, we need finances, we need to make sure our, our numbers and our, our that green stuff is in order. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are always like, okay, how do I have more abundance in my life? Mm -hmm. So that's another one of the pillars that a lot of people want to level up on how to create more abundance. Now, those are the fruits, right? The trees. So how do we bear fruit? Well, you need the right seeds, the right soil, the right watering. And so the four other four pillars are those seeds. And that is the answer to your question. How do I self-love? How do I even do this? So, and you need all four seeds to, to kind of be watered and nurtured in the right soil. And, and it's a practice, right? It's not like once and done kind of thing. So the first thing is your mindset, your mind, like what are your thoughts? What are your beliefs? How do you speak to yourself? One of the first things I ask any client or any student of mine, you know, I tell them on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your self-talk? Where 10 mm -hmm. would be 100% of the things you say are positive, which is like nobody. If anybody told mm -hmm. me they were a 10, I wouldn't believe them, you know, and one would be 100% of the things you say is negative. So that's your mm -hmm. mindset. Like that's really, really important that your thoughts and your beliefs and the way you think are in check, right? Mm -hmm. So now going from the mind into your heart and in your body, that's the second seed, um, which is body consciousness and emotional consciousness, right? So um, like we were talking about earlier, toxic positivity bypasses that because then we're not honoring the truth about what we're feeling in our body and in our heart. So having a full- Which I think leads to anxiety. Right. Yes. When we're, there's pieces like doors in our yes. emotion or heart that are trying to open and breathe. Yes. And then we just like shut them out as if they don't exist. Uh, that's a problem, right? It's not, I, I, we do it to try to have less hurt, but then I think we end up with more anxiety because mm -hmm. our brain, our there's a great book called The Body Keeps the Score. I was but... just, I was literally going to mention that book. We're so like right there. Cause I was like, the body keeps the score. Yes. Okay. Yes. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so it's, you just can't trick your nervous system. You can't. Another, mm -hmm. like, so I love the book, The Body Keeps the Score. And um, another woman who I've interviewed on my podcast, we talk a lot about grief, um, Jocelyn Jackson Williams. She says, um, emotions do take up real estate in your body, you know, and that, and that energy does contribute eventually to physical ailments. So you can pretend that you're not sad. You can pretend that you're not angry, but if anyone listening, right? Just think about any time, like, you know, that feeling where something's stuck in your throat mm -hmm. or where you feel a heaviness in your chest or in your stomach and anxiety in your stomach. That's, unprocessed emotions that's emotions mm -hmm. that you're ignoring body sensations that you're ignoring so a big element very very important to self-love and one of the pillars is to start to have that emotional and body consciousness and it's not about like being an expert like we're not saying you know go become a somatic expert tomorrow but just to start or stop rather ignoring that feeling, mm -hmm. right? That lump in your throat, that heaviness in your chest. There's a reason when we describe those feelings, it's a very physical sensation because mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the body keeps the score, emotions mm -hmm. take up real estate. And, you know, we get all full. And, you know, even for me, when, and I'm sure maybe some people listening can relate to this, when you're really bottling up emotions, for me, I tend to gain weight. Some people lose weight too, like, you know, because you're, literally keeping 
the emo- like you're not processing it so it just goes yeah. stacks on and on and on and that's usually kind of how I know I, I have some like emotional consciousness work to do when I start gaining weight like for no reason seemingly it's like why am I holding I'm holding on to something so no yeah. agree and I I told you I finished up my second book and yes. hired a nutrition coach like in the process because I'm not sure if anyone knows this but writing books are terrible for your health you sit and you sit and you sit and you can't even like I know people like oh standing desk come on if you want to write a book on a standing desk like you're gonna stand for 10 hours no I try to be active but it's just like you just like make more mistakes and it's just really I am definitely about standing and all those kinds of things but yeah not when you write a book you know and it was um but interestingly enough, we know with this nutrition coach, like how many of the conversations with her have focused on emotions. And then there was some other exercise thing I joined. They're like, how much sleep are you getting? How much stress are you under? You know, yeah, we try to like, okay, we just want to calorie like, in, calorie out. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting. You hired a nutrition coach and it wasn't just about like your numbers For or sure. your Mac. It was like, how are your emotions? Mm-hmm. Well, one, that's a great coach, but like, that's, you know, the whole thing about holistic healing and mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's so important. And I, like, I'm so glad you said emotions too, cause it's not just about you sit and you sit and you sit, but like writing a book and you're like, as you mentioned, I'm in the middle of writing one too, man, that will bring up all your stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like, at least for me, like a lot of like, do I know what I'm talking about? Am I having writer's mm-hmm. block? Is anyone going to even care about this? So all the emotions that comes up, it's, it's important to just, it's not just about the physical steps or what yeah. you're eating. How's your sleep? Yeah. How's your, yeah. How's your stress levels? So important. Holistic. <laughs> Holistic. And I, you, you mentioned the word practice and I didn't want to interrupt you then, oh, but yeah. I want to bring it back now. Right. Yes. Cause all these processes, it's like, okay, how do I just like shut the door and do one thing and make one decision and it never be an issue again. And, and these are all terms of practice. You know, my, because of my Christmas schedule with my kids, my kids aren't sleeping in my house for like nine or 10 days. Mm. There's no there's no bypassing of that. It sucks. It sucks. It's very sad. Like, yeah, this whole thing before Christmas. So I have really good self-talk. I'm at, I'm at least a seven and an eight, right? I am really good. At I believe it. I believe I'm really good. Yeah. I mean, I've done this work. I, I should be right. Yeah. And then when I don't see my children for that long, I am sad. Yeah. There's no bypassing that. There's yeah. no bypassing that I'm there's no toxic sad. positivity in your way out of that you feel sad you miss them well there was and there was like a half a carton of ice cream that did get in the way that I did I had to like tell my nutrition coach I was like I'm so sad like <laughs> this, this cinnamon crunch ice cream is so good you know it is but, but there's <laughs> there's no bypassing that and so I, I want to say that in the terms of like what does that realistically look like you know Am I in sorrow every day? Am I crying every day? Am I in pain every day? No. Yeah. But I'm in the practice of experiencing my emotions. Yes. And then turning them into like self-love or or something good. And, you know, I can use it as a way to relate because I know a lot of moms who, if they're divorced or something, don't see their kids all the time. It's really sad. You know, sometimes people are like, oh, you're so, (laughs) this is it. You're so lucky you're divorced because then you get more time to travel with your husband. And I'm like, "Mm -hmm." yeah, one of those times I don't see my kids is Christmas morning every other year. Is that what you would choose? Like, is that, is that one of the choices you, and they're like, yeah, oh, you know, but we, we don't see that, you know? And so I want to kind of bring what that looks like in real life or what that looks like in, you know, kind of the best case scenario. Cause it's, it's, cause I, it's almost like, okay, so if I get past that, can I get to the sunshine and rainbows? all the I time? know, like, you know, I like, I love how you said it. I wish maybe I don't really wish though, but like, you know, I wish I could snap my fingers and wave a wand and have sunshine and rainbows all the time, but it's, it's just not reality. And I think as a coach and as someone who teaches this work, I find it's my responsibility to be real with people, you mm-hmm. know, and life is going to keep on lifing. So you're going to have ups and downs. Mm-hmm. And the real test of your self-love though, is how you are during the downsides mm-hmm. and, and how you bounce back up. And mm-hmm. that does require practice. And I'm so glad you highlighted practice because I say this all the time. It's not just a once and done 
you know, just like if you're working out, you know, you're not going to do one squat and get that, those nice peach booty cheeks. Uh -huh. Like if you want the nice peach booty, you're going to have to keep like, keep going. And, and, you know, and as, for me, you know, I've, I've always been an athlete my whole life. I was in gymnastics, I was in softball. And so as I got older and I wasn't like in practice, you know, or, or, um, or a game like five, mm -hmm. six days a week, I realized I'm like, wait, the booty's deflating, you know, like, oh, I actually have to keep doing this. Yeah. You know, even Olympians, you know, their booty deflates too if they don't keep up the squats. And so yeah. it's the same with self-love. Like you're not gonna be this positive mindset all the time. And for it to be strong, you get to practice you know, those tools in order to have that positive mindset or else, you know, just like the peach booty will deflate, you know, your, your self-love will deflate if, if you don't keep a practice up. So it's important. It would be irresponsible of me to lie to you and say, I have the one tool that's going to make you love yourself forever. Cause if I did, I'd be using it and then mm -hmm. I would give it to everyone and then I'd be out of business. Um, mm -hmm. but that's just and not reality. <laughs> and it's not reality. If anyone listening is saying that, you know, and they're trying, they're listening to some expert and it's like, Oh, it's just a one and done. And there's no problem. Yeah. I mean, that's just, um, it is a practice. It, it is, it is a practice. So and not only there's that, there's a difference between having like a breakthrough, like a new realization and then actually making the transformation and mm -hmm. actually making the transformation, like the long-term permanent transformation, you've mm -hmm. got to do the practices again, back to the whole peach booty thing, right? Like just mm -hmm. because you realize, oh, I, I should do these types of squats to, to have a nice booty. You actually have to go do them now. You can't just yeah. like realize it. And I think that's another thing that I really wanted to name. Cause I think, especially in this culture, we, we kind of get, um, breakthrough addicted to breakthroughs right like new realization new realization you know we listen to a podcast we have a new realization and then we're like yay i'm fixed when it's like no you act like it's not just about the new realization you actually have to take steps you know you, mm -hmm. you can't just read a book and have new realizations you have to read a book and then actually do the steps or, or hire a coach to help you mm -hmm. you know well, I know you're going to be shocked, Amelia, but when I started working this nutrition coach, she had me eat more vegetables. Oh, shocking. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, it's such a breakthrough moment, you know, I mean, it's just such a funny thing. Cause there's yeah. like the, 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 the health coach industry. And I'm very glad I had her. She's kept me accountable. She was worth it. Great. Sue's Carpenter shout out. It was wonderful, <laughs> you know, but she told me to eat more vegetables. I knew that eat less yeah. bread, track what you eat, eat more vegetables and back off the ice cream. I did. I need to hire. I'm so glad I hired her and I believe in coaches. I believe in the accountability, but that's the exact thing. You know, we, we all know we should eat more vegetables. So why are, why is there a pandemic of obesity in the U S you exactly. know, it, it is that, that application phase and, um, information gathering. Yes. Is one step of the process that I see a lot of people stop after yeah become information collectors rather than action takers. implementers yeah mm -hmm. and and you know it, it, I'm so glad that you brought that up too because a lot of people that work with me um you know and I, I'm kind of a know-it-all I admit it and so of course I attract some know-it-alls and so a lot of people are like oh I know that I know that like yeah you know eat more vegetables okay but why aren't you doing it and that's mm -hmm. so kind of back to the seven pillars of self-love because we still have two pillars left to name. I knew I was like there's some more yes yeah. yeah there's two more but that's why it's not just about the actions you know just mm -hmm. because you know what to do and just because you know what your triggers are or you know what your traumas are we do need coaches therapists, healers, whoever to help us, right? Like Olympians have coaches. Mm -hmm. We see them win gold medals. So they know what to do. They know how to do whatever they need to do, yet they still have coaches because no matter how much you know, how much mm -hmm. information you have, how much wisdom you have, you're always going to have blind spots. You're always going to need accountability. And there's always going to be someone who can tweak your game a little bit, you know, like I think with coaches like tennis, tweak your swing, tweak your serve. It doesn't mean you don't know. And I think that's why a lot of people are resistant to hiring coaches, therapists, et cetera, is because they're like, well, I already know. It's like, of course, you know, you're smart. You're, you're a badass. It's not about not knowing, you know, mm -hmm. 
but like that the, the, those those seven pillars that mindset that body consciousness and then the other two um spirituality is is one of them and you know regardless of your religion or what you believe in really what i mean by spirituality is um a connection to something greater than yourself mm -hmm. right so whether it's god or spirit or the universe maybe you don't believe in those things maybe you're atheist that's totally fine but even as an atheist like having a connection to your community, maybe your work community or your um, local community, or maybe you're part of an improv troupe and that's like your community, but we all need to belong to something greater. As human beings, right? Like we're social animals. We need mm -hmm. to belong to something greater, plug into something greater that'll make life more meaningful. So that's what I mean by spirituality. Now for a lot of people, it is the universe. It is God. It is, you know, source divinity it's all of those things um mm -hmm. but I, I like to make that disclaimer because i don't like to exclude anybody i know there's all kinds of experiences that we have so even if you're an atheist there still is like spirituality that you can plug into like even the listeners of your podcast right there's there's an ethos there there's a community there people plug into your podcast to be inspired to listen because it's connecting to something greater it's listening to you interview all these experts and and just getting another perspective you know we can't we don't really survive in isolation right there's a reason why isolation is one of the most heinous torturing uh punishments that you can give someone so spirituality is just that connection to something greater whether it's a greater community or a greater spirit or energy yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like giving back, making a difference, uh, having a sense yes. of purpose. Having, that can be a big part of it too. Yeah. Somebody who says you made my life better. We all want that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that feeds in, you know, having that connection. I'm so glad you named specifically giving back because volunteering, regardless of your spiritual beliefs, volunteering and just giving your time to something that matters to you is a great way to um, enhance that spirituality pillar and, mm -hmm. and just get yourself outside of yourself. You know, sometimes when I talk to my clients, I was like, you know what? I think you just need to get your head out your own, like with love and peace. I think you just need to get your head out of your own butt a little bit. Like you're kind of in your mm -hmm. own problems. And, you know, mm -hmm. even something as simple as like calling up a friend to see how they're doing. And if there's something you can support them with. I know for me, that's helped me a lot when I've been in the depths of my own despair, just like getting outside of myself for a little bit, volunteering at a soup kitchen, calling up a friend, you know, and that's what I mean, like by spirituality or one of the things I mean. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. You're into all that spiritual div divinity stuff. I'm, I'm all about that too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, bigger than ourselves. Uh, so exactly. what is the last pillar? The last one, last but definitely not least, and none of them are the least, is um, shadow integration. Um, and it's kind of, we touched on it a little bit earlier with the whole courageous self-love about looking at the darker parts of you. And so shadow is not the term that I coined. Uh, I believe the first person who coined it was Carl Jung, but mm -hmm. essentially um, shadow, it's a whole big topic. I could do three days on shadow, but I won't in this moment. Um, but it's really like, those parts of you, maybe those parts of your personality or desires even, like desires that you have that for whatever reason, maybe because of culture or society, you've decided were wrong or bad to have. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of disowned that part of you and you, and you don't, so you don't love it anymore. So now you have, you're like fractured. You're, you, you have this part of you that you hide, or maybe it's even like something that you did in the past that makes you just feel really bad every time you think about it, you know, back to the body keeps the score. It's that heaviness. And so shadow integration is about calling it's because we don't want to get rid of those parts. Self-love means you love all of you, all of you. So shadow integration is about taking those parts and calling them back home and, and loving them, you know? And um, I'll share just practically kind of, cause we talked about like the ups and downs and, and feeling bad. Um, and then that shame spiral that we go through. Cause it's like, well, I don't love myself. So now I feel bad that I don't love myself. So mm -hmm. for me, a big part of my shadow integration has been loving myself, even when I don't love myself which like, it sounds super simple, but it's like quite profound 
So like, even when I'm in that kind of depressed mode and you know, that wrapped up in a blanket, I haven't showered in a few days. I kind of smell, I still don't want to get up. I've been going through some stuff. Can I love myself even in that mode? Like, right. And that's, that's, that's a big part of the work and shadow integration is about so much more than that. But like, yeah, can I, can I even love myself when I feel this badly about myself? And that's, that's a big part of the work. <laughs> so if you had like one overall message that you could give anyone and everyone regarding self-love, what would it be? Mm, no pressure, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> um, on it, like you're, you are worthy of love. You are worthy simply because you exist. And even if it might be hard for you to hear that or even wrap your head around it, I'm saying it for your subconscious mind to plant the seed. Even if you did nothing else to accomplish, you're still worthy. Awesome. Amelia, tell people where they can find out more about you. Yes, absolutely. So you can find out um, selflovecoach.com is my website and all my socials are the Amelia Fortes, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, the Amelia Fortes. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming here today and helping us on our journey to becoming toxic person proof. You're welcome. <laughs>